Pretty much everybody out there is going through some tough times now and independent app developers are no exception. So some fellow content creators uh, and I in the Swift community have decided to use our platforms to help showcase some of these apps and help them get more exposure during these times. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you four apps that I really enjoyed that I think you might be able to get some use out of as well. And first up, we got a fun one by Bashir al Mala, and that is called Fireworks. Now, if you're familiar with SpriteKit in the world of iOS development, uh, SpriteKit has particle emitters, and they have this nice editor, similar to what you see here on the screen, that you can make tweaks and make changes and see those happen in real time. Well, you don't have to use SpriteKit to use particle emitters. For example, Core Animation has a CA emitter layer, and that's what you see here on the screen. But using Core Animation, you don't get this cool editor like you do in SpriteKit. Well, that's where Fireworks comes in, and you can tweak in real time your emitter. We're gonna do that in a second. And as you see on the left, it spits out the code here uh, that you can copy and paste into your project. And the value here, like without this editor, like you have to write out all this code yourself for one. And then if you wanna tweak stuff, you gotta tweak the values in the code, run your project, test it, you know. With this, you get to just tweak your emitter in real time, see the changes, and then when you're done playing with it, you just copy and paste this code. Now, of course, these fireworks look cool, but you may be thinking to yourself, Sean, when the hell am I gonna use these fireworks in my app? And you got a point. I mean, I can see some celebratory screen where this may come in handy, but there's plenty of other emitters that may have more realistic use cases, and let's go through them. So you go up here to File, uh, Start, and you see uh, we have a comet. I don't know, maybe you get some use from that. Uh, we're gonna tweak some here in a second. So let's actually go to confetti, right? You can see where this could come in handy. And of course you can change the assets that make up your confetti. You know, the background color is white now, but we could, you know, take the background color to, you know, clear. So whatever you put this on your screen, it just comes up on your screen real quick. There's flame, as you can see, if you ever need fire in your app. <laughs> again, I don't know when. Games, this would come very in handy for games. Um, but again, you're probably using a gaming engine. Uh, mystery, I want to get to uh, flame, uh, rain here real quick, right? Because if you're building a weather app, you can imagine how you might want this subtle rain effect going on. And here's where you can actually play with it. So over here on the right, like you see birth rate, 555. Five, five. Maybe you want light rain. Let's take it down to 50, right? Okay, very, very light rain. Oh man, what if it's a downpour? Let's go to like 2000. Turn, there you go utter downpour and, and you can see you can tweak all this stuff you can tweak the angle everything the color maybe you're you're a real dark soul and you want it to rain blood cool um, but you can see you can just sit here for for days and play around with all these different properties to tweak it to be like how you want um, again, maybe you're building again a weather app let's go to snow uh, you know maybe you're building a skiing app or something to do with weather and you want this very subtle snow effect again birth rate 92 you can change that down to like 20 to get real light snow. And again, you can tweak all these dials to be what you want. And then, like I said, the code is here on the left and you got your CA middle layer. That's some fun to your app. Again, if your app calls for it, real quick note, don't force this into your app <laughs> if it doesn't make sense. But I can think of a lot of app ideas where having some fun emitter layers uh, could add a little flair to that app. So that is Fireworks. Again, back to the, the namesake here. Uh, it is on the Mac App Store. Go check it out. Of course, link to all these apps will be in the description. All right, let's move on to the next one. Here we have the 30 Day Fitness Workout at Home app. Very ASO friendly name there. Uh, and it was made by uh, Edouard Barbier who's an independent app developer and a great follow on Instagram. Like he's constantly posting his progress. Like I essentially watched him build this app in real time uh, via Instagram stories. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, definitely give him a follow uh, over there. And this app offers fitness challenges that you can do at home with no equipment. Sounds like it can come in handy right about now, right? It has all kinds of exercises like burpees, push-ups. Uh, as you can see here, the cool thing, there's 3D models that show you how to do the exercise if you're not quite familiar with what they are. I thought that was a really cool addition by uh, Edward. Also a recent addition. I know that because I watched him talk about it and build it on Instagram. So you go through, create your challenges, and the challenge ramps up over time. So like on day one, you're only gonna do a small number of this exercise, and over the course of the 30 days, it ramps up, and you get this nice, you know, 30-day chart to track your progress. So again, if you're sitting at home and you're a little bit worried about these pounds you're packing on, uh, this could be a great app to check out. Up next, we have Adaptivity by Jeff Hackworth, and this is an amazing tool for developers. Like, as you know, there's so many different phone sizes in the, in the iOS world, uh, iPads, Mac apps, and as developers making products for all these screen sizes, we need to be familiar with all these dimensions. And that's what Adaptivity does for you. I have it up and running on my phone. So we're looking at the dimensions for the regular iPhone 11 Pro size. If you were running this on an iPad, you would get those dimensions. If you're running this on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, you would get those dimensions. So whatever device you're using it on, uh, 
uh, that's what you're going to see. But you can see the, the different points and you can switch from points to pixels, as you can see I'm doing here, uh, you know, based on the device you're on. And in the upper right, if you tap the circle button here, you can see, uh, okay, what is the dimensions of a table view controller? Here you go, it'll pull up the table view. You can scroll here. You're getting all the dimensions of the default uh, table view cell. And then you can even customize this cell even further. In the upper right, you tap on this uh, edit button here. Okay, let's see the accessory. We want to be uh, a check mark. Cool, hit that and close it out. Now you can see very faintly uh, to the right, we have our check mark. So you can see what that looks like. So really what this app is all about, uh, let's go back to this and see, okay, what is a, uh, what, are the, what are the keyboard dimensions when the keyboard's up there, right? So you see the keyboard and you can see the dimensions on the screen have changed. So really, uh, we'll do one more modal view controller, right? So the modal view controller slides up and you get all the dimensions for that. So you can look at the various states of your, your device. And again, if you're on an iPad, you could do like split view controllers, uh, master detail view controllers, same thing with a Mac app. So whatever device you're on, you can see the dimensions that you need to know as a developer, like using these apps, like the safe area inset. A nice little bonus too is uh, you can see down here, system colors, tap on that. And now these are all the new system colors in iOS 13 for like light mode and dark mode, right? You can see what they look like and we're in dark mode right now. Let me, you know, flip the switch to uh, light mode here. Bam, light mode, it's blinding. Um, now you can see what these all look like on light mode because they're different in dark mode, right? Like look at label, label right now is basically black, flip back to dark mode and now label is white. So you get all these system colors in the app uh, that you can check out. And same thing with dynamic type, you can see what that will look like. So just a, a overall great tool for developers. And again, you're seeing the demo on just the iPhone, whatever device you're on, uh, you will see those dimensions. And that brings me to the point that this is a universal purchase, which here in April of 2020 is, is a brand new thing. So you buy this app once, you're getting it on your Mac, you're getting it on your phone, you're getting it on your iPad, and it's only $4. That's a steal. And if you're a developer, I mean, I'm not trying to spend your money, but to me, this is a no brainer. I mean, there's so many different screen sizes, like this is valuable, valuable knowledge. And for four bucks, come on. So again, it's called Adaptivity and it's a great tool from Jeff Hackworth. And finally, we have Book Track by Simone Matalto. The reason I like and chose this app is it's, it's simplicity, clean, minimalistic UI, it does one thing and it does it well, right? It doesn't try to do too much. And I really like that in my apps. And as you can imagine by the title and what you're seeing on the screen, it's a way to track your books. Like you have the books currently in your library. Uh, you can see, you know, the details about them. This is what you, you, know, you have read maybe. But what I like is the wish list, right? Like right now my wish list is empty. I don't know about you. I watch a lot of YouTube videos or, or listen to a lot of podcasts where they may recommend books. And yeah, I have like a notes thing where I try to keep track of them, but uh, this is really cool to legitimately keep track of some books. So if like I want to read, you know, like the Blue Ocean Strategy, Blue Ocean Strat. Uh, G. Search online. There you go. It pops up. I want to read the Blue Ocean Strategy Expanded Edition. Click on that. Uh, add it to your wish list. Again, nice, simple UI. It doesn't do too much. So we'll add that to my wish list. There you go. I get nice little haptic feedback. You can't see that on the video. Letting me know. And I hit done. There we go. Uh, done here on this modal. So now I'm in my library, my wish list. Hit cancel here for the search. Now my wish list shows the Blue Ocean Strategy. And I can go back to my library here. So again, Super clean, super simple. It does one thing and does it well. That's what I like about it. Uh, again, because I listen to a lot of podcasts that recommend books, um, so I can keep track of them uh, here. So I'm gonna get rid of the, the note I keep in the default Apple Notes app and switch over to this, because again, I just like the way this looks. I see the covers of the books, reminds me what they are. Uh, anyway, I'm really glad I decided to feature this app because uh, I'm definitely gonna make use of it. But as I said before, the links to all these apps will be in the description. Go check them out, support your indie devs. These are tough times. Uh, every little bit helps. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.